Hello, my name is David Wright, aka The Bredgicator, and today at Gosney HQ I'm going to be making an amazing sandwich loaf, and then I'm going to be turning it into an absolutely delicious piece of cheese on toast. Sounds simple, and it is. So first thing we need to do is make our sponge which is a pre-fermented dough, which is gonna go into our final dough. It's gonna aid our fermentation. It's gonna give us a really nice, light, delicious crumb. And it's also gonna allow us to get a bit more moisture into the dough, which is gonna make it softer. It's gonna make it last longer. So we've got fresh yeast. You can use dried. If you're using dried, it's just half the amount. So dried yeast is just this yeast with all of the water taken out of it, which is great to sit on supermarket shelves. We've got some delicious water. And then we've got some flour. So we're just using some white flour. Ideally, you want to use stone ground white flour because it's just much better for you and it's delicious. We are just going to take our yeast. Water, use your hand. Nature's whisk, flour goes in. Mix that together. If you don't want to use your hands, you can use a utensil. And if you want to be, if you want to sort of talk to real bakers on online chat rooms, you don't want them finding out you haven't been using your hands to mix this kind of stuff together. Because they'll know, they'll know you're not a real baker. You want to make sure that all the dough is in just one bit, so just get it off the sides, it's just neater. If we just left that as it is, the top would dry out and it would go all crusty and it wouldn't ferment as nicely. So we need to make sure we cover it. I'm going to use this reusable lid and you could also just put a chopping board on top anything so now that's done we're going to leave that for about 50 minutes five zero not 15. you don't have to be too wedded to the time you just want it to double in size and you'll start to see little nice little air pockets that have developed and that's due to the yeast feeding upon the sugars that have been created once you add the water to the flour and this is one of the best things about making bread as soon as you add water to flour everything starts. Sandwich loaves, we want them to be soft and fluffy and delicious. So one of the things we need to do is we need to try and get as much moisture into the dough as possible. And there's a really amazing Eastern method, Tang Zong, I'm probably saying it wrong. I'm sorry, if anyone's offended, please leave the comments below. The Tang Zong is a mixture of flour and water. It's like a water roux, basically. We're gonna heat it and we're going to gelatinize the starch. It's going to start out and it's going to look like floury water. And by heating it up, the starches are going to gelatinize. They're going to encapsulate the water. And they're going to mean that we can add that into our final dough without the dough going to soup. So it's an amazing way of getting really nice, soft, juicy texture into your doughs without the dough basically becoming way too sticky to handle. So all we need to make the Tang Zong is some flour and water. We've got 85 grams of water, 15 grams of flour, which isn't very much, you may be saying to yourself. And I would be too, but I've done it before, so I know that's fine. And then we're just gonna whisk it together. Just get all the lumps out before you start cooking it. And as you can see, it's, it's really watery. And now, using the power of heat, we're going to transform it. We're just going to move the Tang Zong to the oven. And you just want to pop it on the front. So as the water and the flour heat up, the starches will begin to gelatinize. That will mean that it will stay soft within the dough, but it won't make the dough overly sticky. So that's about the consistency. Done. And now we just need to transfer that into a bowl. And we're just going to let it cool down slightly. So we can just cover that with the other bowl. And then you can use the temperature just to help speed up the fermentation of the sponge. And that is a trick. Or a tip. You decide. So whenever you're baking bread in any kind of oven, you need to make sure that the oven gets right up to temperature because you're going to need that residual heat to bake the loaf. So we need to make sure everything's really hot. So we're getting the oven really hot now. And so as we don't waste that energy, I'm going to throw some onions in. They're going to be delicious and you're going to see why later. So we've thrown the onions straight into the fire. I'm not using the rest of the space, so I'm just going to make some delicious confit garlic. So just simply get a garlic bulb and we're just going to smash it with our hand. 
get the garlicky bits out. You know how to do this. It's very easy. I'm just cutting the top and the bottoms off. Garlic, garlic, garlic. Some garlic. Sprinkle of salt. And then you just want to cover it with oil. If you are taking time to make this, make loads. Last for ages in the fridge. You can leave it covered in oil. The oil's delicious. Makes all of your food nicer. Confit garlic is just the best thing ever. So I've got my onions and my garlic in the oven. Leave that in there for about half an hour until it's done. You want the garlic to be soft and brown, caramelised. Obviously, you don't want it to be burnt. The onions are going to be charred on the outside and we're going to remove all those charred layers and inside it's going to be delicious and sweet and flavourful. So I don't know if you can hear that, but the, you can hear all of the juices inside of the onions just bubbling away. Onions char on the outside and they form like a protective cast iron skin and make themselves into like a tiny little pressure cooker. And then all of the beautiful sugars start to caramelize and soften and oh, it's just delicious. It's great if you're doing any, any kind of like cooking, like with pizza ovens, barbecues, it's a great piece of prep to do and just take you to that next level. So the sponge has been sat for about an hour. As you can see, it's risen up really nicely and looks like a sponge. So now we're going to get on to the mixing stage. We're going to mix the final dough. I'm going to use a mixer, but you can mix it by hand. If you're mixing it by hand, you're going to want to knead it for 10 minutes and then give it a nice rest and maybe give it another knead for another five minutes. You can continue to develop it through the bulk fermentation phase. The beauty of using a mixer is we can get that gluten development all done in one stage and then we can kind of get on with the rest of our lives. All spongy. Next we've got our tang, make sure you get it all off. And then to that I'm going to add the water. And then at this stage I can start the mixing process. Hook down. So we're just going to mix those together. I'm going to add in the yeast. I'm using fresh yeast. If you're using dry yeast, again, it's usually half the amount of fresh yeast. Check the pack because sometimes it's like super fast acting and you need even less. Honey, next. And then I'm going to add the flowers in. So we've got our wholemeal flour, white flour, diastatic malt powder, milk powder. I'm going to let that mix a bit before I put the salt in. So I'm just going to speed that up a bit. I'm using fine salt. My advice to you is don't bother using fancy salt. Fancy salt is for fancy things and you don't need fancy salt for this. Just some nice fine salt that's going to incorporate into the dough nicely. So that goes in. That's the first stage of mixing where you've got the slow stage where you're bringing all of the ingredients together. Now we're going to increase the speed and I'm going to add the butter in and that's going to take us to the point where we've got a delicious silky dough. You can over mix dough. As you mix it, as you agitate it, those proteins come together and they form longer and longer gluten strands. But what will happen if you go too far is it will start to degrade and you'll find that the dough goes from being sort of silky firm dough to becoming quite soupy. Then you're in trouble and there's, there's no real way back. You just got to start again. Butter goes in. Okay, we're good, we're done. So you want it to be tacky, but not sticky. And if you don't know the difference between that, then I can't help you. You can kind of feel that there's lots of moisture in there, but it's not sticking to your hands. So we'll just finish that off on the table. We're just tightening up the skin of the dough. We're just making it kind of neat and tidy. We're going to leave that for 50 minutes. So put something on top, get a timer set and let it roll. Done. Very lightly flour your surface, not too much, just a very nice fine scattering just to stop the dough from sticking when we're shaping it. That was loud. So here's our dough. It feels so nice. I mean, you can see how it's lovely and aerated. What we now need to do is shape it. So we're going to re-engage those elastic gluten properties, which is going to give us a lovely shape. And it's also going to mean when we slice the bread once it's been baked, that we've got a nice even texture. So if it's not shaped nicely, when you put it into the tin, you can get kind of uneven pockets. Here's my patented method for shaping. The method itself isn't patented, but the weird way that I have of explaining it is. I just copied this off my dad, who was a baker for about a million years, and it really does work so well. The first thing to do is imagine there's a line going across here, 
And what you want to do is just grab onto it with your knuckles. And then you're going to use these knuckles just to push the air out of the dough. And that's stage one. Stage one, monkey knuckles. Stage two, Swiss roll. It's going to roll it back. And we're imagining we're making a Swiss roll, which almost nobody has probably. And if you've watched any of Richard Bertone's videos, he was going on about this, I know for a fact. You need to make sure you know where your seam is and you want to keep the seam in a straight line. If you lose where your seam is and it goes all over the place, then when you put it into the oven, it's kind of going to go all over. It doesn't matter so much in the tin, actually, but if you're doing a free-formed one, it does, and it's good practice. So we've got our seam here, moustache. Moustache. After moustache, monkey knuckles. Envelope. Monkey knuckles. Swiss roll. It's that easy. All we have to do now is place it in the tin. I've got this lovely sandwich loaf tin, or if you're an American, you might call it a Pullman tin. So lid comes off, dough goes in, and then the lid goes back on. And that's it. We're just going to let it prove up. That's going to rise up and in about 45, 50 an hour, something like that. It's going to reach the top of the tin and then we're going to bake it. So now we'll just while we've got a bit of time, we are now going to take off the charred elements of our dirty onions and see what we've got in the middle. Take off the outer layers. That is a delicious onion. 45 minutes. I just made up that it would be about 45 minutes, but it turns out that is exactly how long it is. Here we go. See how it's just kissing the top of the lid there. That's what you want. The rest of the spring, when we put it into the oven, it's going to rise again and it's going to completely fill the tin. And we need to give it a nice kind of steamy environment first up. Luckily, there's a little, you can't see it, but there's a steam injector at the back. I'm going to pour some water into that, which is going to create steam within the oven chamber. I've got the door on with the vents completely closed. And for the first 20 minutes, I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to touch the door. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to be a good boy. And after that 20 minutes, I can then open the door. I can take the lid off and we can finish off the bake. If you don't have a way of getting steam into the oven, it's not 100% necessary because you've got the lid. The like 20% of the moisture within the dough through baking is going to come out. That's going to create its own element of steam. We're going bolt and braces. We're going to put a bit of steam in the oven as well. And that's just going to give us the best possible rise and shine. OK, let's get this in the oven. Our sandwich loaf has been in the oven for about 20 minutes. So now we're going to get it out. We're going to check it. We're going to take the lid off and then probably give it about another 10 minutes. Oh, it smells amazing. Let's have a look. Looking pretty good. So it's not quite done yet. We need to put it back in the oven for about another 10 minutes. Just let the outside crust form, get a bit more color on top, and then we're doing well. Back in the oven, 10 minutes. So the bread's been in for another 10 minutes with the lid off. So let's get it out and get it cooling. There we have it. You want to make sure the bread cools entirely before you slice into it. Because this whole thing is just like a big cube of steam right now. If you cut into it too soon, I know you're tempted to do it, but just don't, please. All the steam's going to escape and it will dry out really quickly. So let it cool. And to distract myself from eating this whilst it's still too hot, and I'm going to roast off some tomatoes and prep some other stuff for cheese on toast. So we're just going to roast these tomatoes for the cheese on toast. I'm roasting them because if you just use raw tomatoes, they're too watery and we want to just get some of that water off, intensify the flavour and make sure that we don't make our lovely light bread go soggy. So straight into a hot oven. A little bit of lemon zest, just ramp up the acidity even more. And then just a bit more juice just to deglaze. Yummy, yummy, yummy. You've done well. You haven't cut into your warm loaf. And now we're going to have a look and see what the structure's like on the inside. I'm hoping for soft and fluffy and nice, even bubbles. 
Is it good? Oh yeah, that's great. Look at that. When you're baking a loaf, you're looking for a nice even crust all the way around, which we have. So now we've made our bread, and now I'm just gonna show you how I like to construct cheese on toast. So I've got some of the oil here that I confit the garlic in. I'm just gonna brush that lightly on the bread. This is gonna be the underside. And I'm just gonna put that in the dome just to get a bit of color on. Just lightly toasted. Gonna to start off with the tomato, the onions and confit garlic, a few pickles, bechamel. This cheese is called Ogleshield and it is the best cheese in the world for making cheese on toast. Into the oven. Cheese on toast with reduced tomatoes, dirty onions, confit garlic, bechamel, pickles, garlic oil, this bread, which is amazing, and ogle shield. So for the full recipe, go to gosney.com. If it's okay, I'm just gonna eat this now. It's really nice. <laughs> It's amazing. You have to balance the cheese out. Greasy cheese, greasy old onions, greasy garlic, mm. acidic tomatoes, lemon juice. Super complex. And then the nuttiness of, it's a yeah. perfect base as well. 